In my previous video, I took data that looked like this and turned it into this, where I removed all the repetitions, counted all the repetitions, and then even summed the values. I did it all with one apply to each, and now I'm gonna show you how to do it with no apply to each, all in just six steps. Here is my source data, and here the ID is unique each time, but you'll see that the customer is repeating themselves. Same with their customer ID but what they're purchasing is different each time. The first step is to create a unique list of the customer IDs. Once I have that, I can count the repetitions and do other aggregations. To get the unique IDs, I'm gonna come over here and use a select action. So I pick my select, my from is going to be my only option of performance is so and I'm not doing a key value pair. Instead, I'm gonna switch to this map mode. And then if I select the expression here, I can pick an individual item by typing an item and then question mark and then what property I want. And I'm gonna select customer ID since that's what this property is. And I named this customer's ID repeating, click update. Now, if I hit save, and then come up here and run a test. I like to open all my tests in a separate tab. And if we open this, we got a bunch of repeating customer IDs. Let's get the unique ones. If we come down here and hit add action again, I'm gonna select a compose. And there's a great expression here called union, which lets you combine two lists together and it'll just select the unique values. So I'm gonna do union, and the source is customer IDs repeating. And then the second list I need to compare to, it's a little weird, but I just pick the exact same list again. And if I hit add, save, if I open up my results down here, you'll see that they're nicely unique. Now the magic to accomplishing all of this is by using XML. First, we have to take our source data and put it into XML format. So I'm gonna type in compose, select compose. I'm gonna call it customer performance XML setup. And then just copy exactly as I'm doing it right here, which is open bracket, close bracket. Just type in the word root, colon, array. If you're familiar with JSON, you will realize that I'm just making an object here. Another colon, close it. And then inside of here, let's click the dynamic expression and we're gonna select our performances source from earlier. So in the end, it looks like this. And then let's add one more compose here. And this time we're gonna actually convert that XML setup to XML. So I named it customer performance XML. And then down here, you just select the expression and then inside of here, if you type in XML and then select the previous item we made of setup, click add, and let's save it and see our results. And if we scroll to the bottom, select customer performance XML, we get all this gobbledygook. But if we select it all, there's a website called xpather.com and we can paste that into here. And if we click this format button, here's our data and we can use XPath expressions to pull whatever data we want. In this case, I'm gonna do root array. So just type in this and then, okay, it gets me everything. But if I put in bracket and I type in customer ID equals two, like that, look, it found all of those individuals. It's showing multiple results because it's an array, but watch what else we can do. I'm gonna choose customer ID equals one. I know that Anna Smith appears three different times here. And look at this nifty expression. At the very beginning, if I type in the word count here, and then at the end too, look, it got me the total value of three. And if you're not impressed yet, watch what happens if I do sum. Sum is invalid because it wants me select a specific value from here, not just count the items. So in here, if I put slash and then I type in cost, boom, it just totaled up all the costs where the customer ID equals one. So Anna's total cost that she spent is 25. We're gonna use this to our advantage. Let's bring this home. This is the final action we need. It's a select action. So if we type in select and choose it, this is gonna help us build the final JSON. So our source is going to be the original unique IDs. 
And then we want to make the first property of the actual customer ID so we know who's who. And in here, if we press the expression, we just need to type in item up here and it will select that individual ID. Click add. I'm going to name this final output. I'm going to name the next one transaction count. And then in here, let's select the function expression. Here's the expression from earlier to do that. I'm going to copy it, hop back into here. Now, first, I need to let Power Automate know that I'm using XPath. And XPath is that language we've been using out here. And it needs to know what we want to use it on. What's our source data? So our source data is customer performance XML. And then we're going to hop into here and then paste that expression like that. And if we click add, now don't actually do this. Just watch this first. I'm going to hit save and show you the results. If we open it up here and our results are transaction count three. Um, Pretty cool. But as you can tell, this is hard coded. So this won't quite work for us. We are going to put it in this text editor. If we want to dynamically generate the ID, we're going to have to use an expression called concat. Concat just puts different strings together. So in here, we want everything up to here. And then we're going to separate the one out. Except instead of one, we want to put our item from earlier, it's really easy to do something like forget to put an ending parentheses. So make sure you get that. And then now we're good. Click update. And then now let's save and run it. Now, if you find all this overwhelming, I don't blame you. If you need a slightly simpler version, I have a different video, but with using one apply to each. So be sure to check that out if this is freaking you out. All right, and down here, that's already looking better, but let's add our customer name here. To do that, we're gonna get rid of the count, and then at the end of this, we're gonna do a slash, and then just type in the property we care about, which is customer. And then there she is repeating that many times. And we don't want all of them. But in Power Automate, we can just select the first one of this. Interestingly enough, this is almost harder than calculating the sum and the count. So I'm going to do customer. But then this is a little bananas. At the end of all this, I want to put a question mark and put a zero. The zero means I'm getting the first item in the array or the list. Because if you notice, this gave us all items where the customer ID equals one. So the final version looks like this. Don't forget to remove your count here, uh, slash customer. You also need to select the first item in the array like this. And then just to be on the safe side, even though I don't think this is necessary, I like to put it all in one line. And then I copy it and then throw it into here for customer name. And then while we're here, let's just finish up the total spent because it's, well, exactly the same as transaction count, except we just have to modify a couple things in it. So in here, let's just change up. Instead of count, we're going to do sum. And then at the very end, we also need to select the specific property. The final version looks like this. Don't forget your bracket and then also remove the bracket at the end here. And if we zoom out, let's update it. That green bar is a good sign. If we scroll to the bottom, let's look at our final output. And oh, we're so close. Everything, all our totals are right. Transaction counts looking good. Let's get rid of this thing. So in customer name after customer, you put text and then parent open, close parentheses. And now if we open that up, we'll see everything is beautifully formatted. Now you may not want to work with customer ID. Maybe you want to work with customer name. So you want to do something like where customer equals Anna Smith. In this case, a lot of times XML can kind of fall apart with spacing. So you have to add these stupid functions like this, normalize space, and then add another parentheses and then it starts working. This is totally doable, but with these little single quotes, it gets kind of annoying. If you really need to do this, my next video takes a deeper dive into XPath to accomplish this stuff.
Thanks for watching. If you want to go deeper down this XPath rabbit hole, I got a great video on how to match on different keys, which gets into really the most advanced parts of the XPath that I've seen. If you want an easier video than this to accomplish the same thing, check out my other group buy video.